Well, hi there. This is a legless lizard. Now that doesn't mean that it's a snake. In fact, it's not a snake. Now I would argue that snakes are also legless lizards. Um, in fact, I have done so right here. And that is, uh, in, unless of course that snake has legs because snakes don't have legs unless they do. Two of the three biggest groups of snakes both have legs. We find fossils of four-legged snakes. There are a number of features that make snakes unique from other lizards. This animal, the Sheltapusic, has uh, none of them. If you would like, I'd be happy to make a video entirely about the unique features of snakes in the future, but for now, I'll name just a few. The eyelids of snakes are fused shut. These guys, on the other hand, have movable eyelids and blink. Snakes have an extremely kinetic skull. We have a full video on this. The Sheltapusic does not. Snakes have no external ear openings. These do. Snakes have belly scoots. These do not. Snakes have overlapping scales. Not these guys. Snakes have long bodies and short tails. These guys have short bodies and long tails. It's even easy to see where the body ends and the tail begins by looking at the lateral groove down its side. Unlike snakes, which are fairly soft to the touch, these guys are covered in rigid armor. Their skin is not stretchy like that of a snake. And the only reason that they can expand their armor to breathe or eat is because of that lateral groove. And it ends where the body ends and the tail begins. Anyway, they aren't snakes. But are they good pets? And is the European legless lizard the best pet lizard for you? To figure this out, we will need to score the European legless lizard, also known as the Sheltapusic, based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Sheltapusic a score of three out of five. I would define their handleability as being mm, fine. They aren't really fun to handle, as they're a bit of a handful. Though they can bite, and rather hard, that isn't really the issue. I've never been bitten by one, though that may change today. The main thing is that they just don't seem to like being held. And they're not very flexible, so they don't hold on like snakes. Usually they're wiggling, hissing, mock striking, and death rolling to try to get away. And though mine aren't biters, some of them are. And where snakes generally have weak bite force due to their kinetic skulls, these guys eat snails. And they bite like an animal that eats snails. They can also drop their tails. Never actually seen this happen, but the possibility is there. And since the body is so short and they don't have any legs, generally you're holding on to them at least partially by the tail. Now you can handle these, but it's not a pleasure. If you want a legless lizard that is great to hold, may I recommend uh, snakes? But if you'd like to know more about handling of the Sheltapusic, the European legless lizard, one of our very first videos that we released on this channel was all about handling these guys, so uh, check that out right here. And that actually gives me a moment to pause and say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. If you watch that video of me handling a Sheltapusic, you will notice that this channel has come a long way with regard to our capabilities and the quality of our videos. And this is largely due to the support of our patrons at Patreon and the things they've allowed us to achieve. Thank you so much. And, and as you may know, to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon, we have provided a number of really awesome features. And if you'd like to check those out, or, or if you'd just like to support this channel continuing to get better and better at what we do, please check out our Patreon page. When it comes to care, we give the Sheltapusic a score of five out of five. Honestly, these are a joy to keep. In many ways, they're like a blue tongue, but without as much vegetation in their diets or toes to lose. In the wild, they eat a lot of snails and slugs. Those make good food for them in captivity, but only if you have a source for clean, captive-bred gastropods. Snails and slugs often carry a host of parasites. Fortunately, they do well in a diet featuring other feeders, such as crickets, roaches, and superworms. Just be sure to dust them regularly with calcium and vitamins. They will also eat ground meats, including high-quality dog foods. They really aren't difficult to feed. They should have substrate that allows digging and will hold some moisture. These guys do not need to be damp, but they shouldn't be bone dry either, especially around shedding. Be sure that water is available at all times from a bowl, and that they have access to UVA and UVB lights. They don't need a very hot basking spot, but they do need one. Make sure that your enclosure favors ground space over vertical space. 
Enclosures like those that we've received from Toad Ranch and Zen Habitats would be great choices. It should be mentioned that they will climb, so some branches and climbing spots will be used, but length is really more important than height. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Sheltapusic a score of 4 out of 5. These guys do have a tragic flaw that makes me not want to recommend them to you. It's the reason that I've waited this long to cover them. The problem is that they're almost never available captive bred. This is a hardy enough lizard that even imports tend to do well in captivity, but I fear for the long-term survival of this species if they become highly sought after as pets. They are incredible educational animals, but unless you have a legitimate educational reason for getting one, please wait, because I have some good news. When it comes to availability, we give the Sheltapusic a score of 2 out of 5. They are often available online. I've seen them at expos and pet shops, and the truth is that I don't mind that they're rare. Those are wild-caught imports, all of them. If we take too many of them from the wild, we won't have any left in the wild. And they're not available captive bred because we don't know how to breed them, though that may be about to change. The thing is that most animals don't breed all of the time. There's generally a specific time of year when breeding is most likely to be successful. Animals that are ready to breed at that time produce more offspring than those that don't. But how do they know when to breed? Well, there are a myriad of indicators that might allow an animal to determine what time of year it is and when is the right time to breed. It might be temperature or change in temperature, day length, moisture and barometric pressure. It might be preceded by brumation or estivation. There are a whole host of environmental cues that an animal might use to determine when to breed. And the problem is that we often don't know what these cues are. And that has long been the case with the Sheltapusic. But I said we had some good news. The good news is that some zoos and other institutions have recently had some success breeding them. And that means that we may have cracked the code. And if that's the case, then get yourself a captive bred Sheltapusic as soon as they become available. Who knows, they may be more handleable as well. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Sheltapusic a score of 4 out of 5. While I'm sure that captive bred babies will be more than imports, this is not an unreasonably expensive lizard. They aren't crazy cheap either, but they're cheaper than blue tongues. The enclosure similarly isn't super cheap or super expensive. Be sure it has a good lid. These are pretty good at fitting through small spaces. You'll need UVA and UVB lights, substrate, hides, a water bowl, vitamins and calcium, and that's about it. And that is why overall we give the Sheltapusic a score of 3.6 out of 5. This isn't the best pet lizard. In fact, right now I wouldn't recommend getting one as a pet at all. Get a captive bred eastern glass lizard, a pink tongue skink, or a blue tongue. But if what you want is a grumpy, easy to care for lizard that everyone will think is a snake until you blow their minds, then a captive bred Sheltapusic, as soon as they become available, may be the perfect pet false snake for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon.